night, Reverend Yolanda. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for making time in your busy schedule. I mean, Absolutely. putting something like this together has got to be literally massive. Tell us about kind of this origin story of Beyonce Mass and you understanding the need to kind of bring worship in this way. Yeah, so my primary profession is as a professor of religion. So I teach Hebrew Bible, and I'm really concerned with how Black women encounter scripture and how our identity is formed by it. So I teach a class called Beyonce in the Hebrew Bible, and we do that work in the class. And, you know, as a professor, you don't get to determine who's in your classroom. So my initial assignment was I want everybody to flex the muscle of what it means to center Black women in a worship service to tell our stories, to talk about our survival, because even for Black women, we're not used to centering ourselves. Right. So we did this as a worship service at the school where I was teaching at the time. And we got invited to do it at a church in San Francisco, and we were supposed to have 100 people there, and 1,000 people showed up, and it went viral. And so it really has given us the opportunity for the past four years to be all over the world doing this kind of womanist worship service and celebrating Black women. This is phenomenal. Thank you. Oh, my word. I mean, you know, it, it's got to be one of those things where it's like you had maybe a vision, obviously, for the class. And for it to explode like this, I can't wait to talk to you after we show this clip um, of Beyonce Mass. I can't wait to just really dive into what that means for you. But before we do that, we'll let the audience kind of get a take a little bit about Beyonce Mass. You guys awesome. get to see it at Kennedy Center. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to the Beyonce Mass. I am Reverend Yolanda Norton. I'm so glad to be with you here this evening. We want to welcome you to this Christian worship experience. This is womanist worship. This is, this is worship. No, that's right. We like that energy. Come on, keep it live. This is womanist worship, a worship that privileges, understands the realities, the stories, the struggles of black women. As I said, I don't know what it took for you to be here today, but we are so glad that you are here. If you have never felt seen before, know that we see you. If you have never felt loved before, know that we love you. If you have never felt like you were a part of something, you are a part of something here. And it's not because of anything that any of us has done. This is the love of God. Amen. I don't know what your vision of the church is, but we have decided that no matter your race, your age, your gender, no matter who you love, you are the thing that God had in mind when she looked out over the world Amen. and said, it is good. <laughs> so we don't do Frozen Chosen here. This is not your grandma's church. Sing as loud as you can. Dance, clap, love, live, understand this worship. You are welcome here. I get the chills about this, Reverend Yolanda. I mean, thank you. Uh, you, you know, you're talking about, okay, I have a vision for my class. Okay, we're going to do this thing. And then it blows up like this. And you're talking about now four years later. Just tell us a little bit about how that's been sitting with you. I mean, it's a, overwhelming at times, right? Like to, to think about the fact that they're that we were talking about something. We were having a conversation. I was imagining something that actually people were needing, right? Not just in San Francisco, not in my classroom, but all over the world that people needed to hear a different view and vision of who God is and how the church functions. And so it has been heartwarming, amazing, overwhelming to continue to have this conversation. And every time I think, oh, maybe this is gonna be it, maybe people are over the Beyonce mass, other communities call, other communities invite us into their space, and we're really grateful to continue to have these conversations about what it means for Black women to be God's work in the world. You know, this is something that resonates with me as a Black woman. I mean, seriously, it does. I um, 
have, you know, had a Christian background. I really have uh, been moving into this kind of African spirituality, understanding some of the original things that our ancestors did and the ideas of it being, you know, all of us being so intentional in terms of our pathway in the world, our purpose and what we bring to the world is so true. And more people need to understand that it's not by accident that they are here. And I really appreciate when you said, look, it's not a show, this is worship. Yeah. Tell us a bit about what you really want the audience to experience when they come to worship and, and experience Beyonce mass. So for, for me, what's important is that from beginning to end of worship, uh, the worship experience, we are intentional about narrating a God who pulls people in and doesn't push people out. Mm -hmm. So we talk about Christianity being, um, having the potential to be loving, inclusive, affirming of people's identities. And so that's what I want people to experience. I don't want people to feel like if they dance or if they sing or if they clap, that that's God, God's going to come down and strike them with lightning. This is really about talking about God's hospitality, God's love and doing the thing that black women do, which is love and care and nurture one another and other people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and and of course, I would be remiss if I don't ask. I mean, you know, as, as, as someone who appreciates Beyonce, uh, how was it that it was like, look, we we gotta we gotta throw Beyonce in here. We're gonna do something that's really you know resonating with the work of Beyonce and and the way that her music is kind of hit the rest of the world. So for me, the Beyonce piece was because so uh, she's a year older than I am. So for for my whole life, her music has provided. Um, a soundtrack for my experiences. I can, based on the song, whether we're talking about Destiny's Child or Beyonce's solo album, um, I can track parts of my life that way. And I think that's the case for a lot of Black women, right? Like you, you can think about where you were when Single Ladies came out or when Lemonade dropped. And so um, that was one piece. It was also a piece of, um, we think about Beyonce as unique and she is, she is magnificent and all of her musicality and her dancing her creativity, but when we look at the things that Beyonce has done, it lives in a lineage of black women. Mm. Um, and so I wanted us in worships, I didn't, I didn't want us to deal with hymns or gospel music because I didn't have time in my semester to unpack the racism and the sexism that's in the liner notes of that music. So you let black women tell black women's story. So you have a black female artist who has been able to transcend so many spaces, guide us through this Christian worship experience. It's a great way to do it. And Thank it's you. such a unique, I think, uh, perspective and approach to worship. But you are right in that regard. I think about somebody like my mother who has had her, you know, Beyonce of her era, right? And, and that's so true for so many of us. And, and particularly when we think about how music resonates with us as people, um, you know, and how it connects us, brings us together. Um, it's a great, great, I think, basis for what you all are doing. Now, now this then took a whole team. Uh, you got to talk Talk to us about how you've been able to formulate a solid team to travel the world with you and, and bring Beyonce Mass to all of these regions of the world. Yeah. So, you know, growing up, my mom always told me, when you find good people, you keep them with you. And so really, as we've been on this journey um, around the world, we've we've picked up artists. We have uh, Afro-Portuguese singers, um, my, my bass player, who was, my ba who was in the first Beyonce in the Hebrew Bible class. Um, so we've got this hodgepodge of people who travel with us, but it's also really important that if we're going to go into a community, that when we go into that community, we pull together a coalition of people who are rooted in that space. So the conversations that we are having, worship should be relevant and local and all of those things. So we really count on our community partners to help us do that work. So we got an initial uh, invitation from University Congregational UCC two years ago to think about this. Of course, the pandemic kept moving that back. Um, and we said to them, we're happy to come at your invitation, but we need to build a bigger and broader community. We need to know where the black women are. We need to know where black folks are talking about these things. And so we've pulled in acts on stage. It's amazing work um, that's happening with uh, Michelle Ling Raymond. We've also been working with um, the WOW Gallery. So all these people who have this kind of um, cocentric energy who really love and appreciate black women and have an ability to see God as more than in a tall steeple white church 
are people that were uh, who are helping us do this work in Seattle. I just uh, appreciate that approach because I think uh, oftentimes there isn't enough local collaboration and it is necessary when you're talking about really curating the experience, uh, particularly around worship, so that it is very, uh, I think, of the, the place that you're in. It's a great approach. Honestly, Reverend Yolanda, I'm so excited. Thank now, you. I mean, this is something that's happening this Friday, so it's taken a long time to get here, but I know that there's excitement from you and the whole team to be here in Seattle. Tell us a little bit about that, because this is going to be amazing on Friday. Yeah, so we're going to, we, again, because we want to have a conversation about the people, so we're going to talk about what it means for Black women in Seattle to be erased and uh, hyper-visualized -visual, in the space. We're really excited to really connect with people in new ways. And we always name, particularly in the Seattle community, we want to name this as the beginning of our work and not the end. So our hope um, in the kind of year to come is to launch something called the Black Girl Magic Academy that's going to be focused on helping provide positive identity formation for Black girls between 13 and 17. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use this as a launching point for our work um, in the larger community. We are excited to, I mean, Seattle's just like a, it has its own energy. And so the ability to continue to experience Black Seattle, to see how folks are rooted in this space and it, it gives us new energy. So we're really glad to be here. Well, we are glad to have you. And we're really glad that you were able to take some time out of your busy schedule to join us right here in the Black Media Matters studio. Right here at Converge <laughs> Media for the Morning Update Show. We really appreciate you. I know uh, Salman has the link. He'll be dropping in the comments. But you can look right there in that camera. Make sure people know how to follow uh, Beyonce Mass and you and how they can get the ticket to the worship service happening on Friday. So absolutely go uh, to www.beyoncemass.com. It'll keep you abreast of where we're going to be. We also have the larger nonprofit that we're launching that includes the Black Girl Magic Academy. So you can go to www.womanistgate.org. Um, you can find the information about this Beyonce Mass uh, on our Facebook page, the Beyonce Mass. Search for the Beyonce Mass. Um, and you'll find the link to brown paper tickets where we have tickets left. Tickets are going incredibly fast, so we encourage you to get your tickets now, but only get what you need so you don't keep someone from coming and experiencing this worship service with us. Oh, Reverend Yolanda Norton, thank you so much. Thank you. I, I'm trying to figure out right now if I got time in my schedule to be there. I would love to be able to see all of this happen and to participate. I just appreciate you for taking time to join me today. And, and you, you know, as, as you just said, this is just the beginning. We're going to continue to stay connected. <laughs> That's right. So, right on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs>